Good morning, folks. Let's start with the recommended article from Curtin University, discussing some of the biodiversity changes and future circumstances of how rain changes specifically are going to shape and reshape certain parts of the world's ecosystem. This article is linked for you in the About tab just below this video, along with all the helpful links for the news and website. Straight to the RSOE EDIS alert map where a groundwater monitoring well designed to make sure no contamination from the nuke plant escapes is found to have radioactive tritium. Not something you want to sprinkle on a salad. They claim it's under control. What's out of control is the rain at the Philippines. Anymore, and NASA's rainfall measurement mission will need a new color for the top of their legends. Just watch that accumulation here over the last few days. Yesterday we called out the mini cell down to southwestern Europe. But today we see that the system stretched and shifted back north over to the UK, where it again caused flooding conditions. The wind alone isn't as helpful with the pressure overlay, however, showing just how big that low cell is, encompassing a few cells itself. On to the west, lows in the Pacific remain content in their seats, but the drop onto the coastlines has gotten significant over about a thousand mile stretch of them. Air diving down across the Canadian border, meeting warmer moisture from the south up into the central states will make for some major snow in parts of the Midwest and further to the east. You can see again how the dip in upper level air patterns brings the cold far, far south. But folks, the top weather watch right now is for New Zealand, the North Island, Auckland specifically. Right now the storm is hundreds of miles offshore, but in a mere three days it will be time to hunker down. The strength will weaken a bit before landfall, but the precipitable water shows that the rain could be a major flood risk. We will update this track in the morning and evening news until the storm is gone. Solar wind, showing that the CME we expected either missed or is late. As we verify this on our backup from Soho, this fortifies the original diagnosis of the event. We said it would be a minor CME and likely get here the 17th or the 18th. At this point, it's of scientific interest only. You know, these sunspots told me they'd be bringing a few friends. <laughs> they should have brought more. The size is impressive, and so is the complexion we see at the further southern region, and also the development up north, baby spots born before our eyes in the last day. But, despite this uptick in sunspot number, the flaring has died down off its high sea peak yesterday. It is almost certain to come back today, however, M flare chances should be around 50 or 60 percent. If so, I would expect them to again be from these incoming groups. Perhaps the north will get a word in as well. We should also remember the coronal hole is earth facing today, setting its stream our way for possible geomagnetic instabilities in three to five days. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear at 6.15 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.